Hey there, space explorers. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a wild ride beyond the planets to answer a question that's probably crossed your mind. What's above and below our solar system? You know, we often think of the sun, earth, Mars, and all those planets spinning neatly around in a flat plane. But what's out there beyond that? Is it just a big, empty void? Or is there more to the story? Spoiler alert. There's a lot more. We're diving into the cosmic layers surrounding our solar system, pulling from rock-solid sources like NASA, the European Space Agency, and top astronomical research. Stick around for the next few minutes, and I promise you'll see our place in the universe in a whole new way. Plus, we'll end with a question that'll leave you itching to learn more. Let's blast off. Our solar system. A tiny cosmic pancake. Okay, let's start with the basics. Our solar system is like a cosmic pancake, a mostly flat disk where the sun sits in the middle and the planets, asteroids, and comets orbit around it. This flat plane called the ecliptic is where most of the action happens. Why is it flat? Well, about 4.6 billion years ago, a giant cloud of gas and dust collapsed to form the sun and planets. As it spun, it flattened out like pizza dough creating this disk. Pretty neat, right? But here's the thing. Above and below the solar system don't mean the same thing as up and down on Earth. On our planet, gravity tells us the ground is down and the sky is up. In space, there's no universal up because there's no fixed point to compare to. So, when we talk about what's above or below the solar system, we're using the ecliptic plane as our reference. Picture it like a table, and we're looking at what's stacked above it and what's tucked underneath. Ready to explore? Let's go. The heliosphere our solar system's force field. First stop, the heliosphere. This is like a giant bubble that wraps around the entire solar system, created by the sun's solar wind, a stream of charged particles shooting out in all directions. According to NASA, this bubble stretches about 120 astronomical units, way past Pluto. That's like 120 times the distance from Earth to the sun. Above and below the ecliptic, the heliosphere forms a kind of shield, protecting us from the harsh radiation and particles floating in interstellar space. The shape of this bubble is super cool. It's not a perfect sphere. It's more like a stretched out teardrop. Why? Because our solar system is speeding through the galaxy at about 500,000 miles per hour, and the heliosphere gets squished in the front and stretched out in the back, kind of like a comet's tail. The edge of this bubble, called the heliopause, is where the solar wind meets the interstellar medium, the thin soup of gas and dust between stars. NASA's Voyager 1 and 2, which are still sending data back after decades in space, actually cross this boundary, giving us a peek at what's out there. Above and below, it's a mix of cosmic rays, sparse gas, and magnetic fields. Not exactly a party, but it's the first layer of our cosmic neighborhood. Hey, if this cosmic adventure is blowing your mind, Hit that like button and subscribe to join us for more space explorations. Drop a comment if you've got a favorite planet or space fact. Let's get the conversation going. The Oort Cloud, a cosmic snow globe. Now let's zoom out even further way, way out to the Oort Cloud. This is one of the coolest and most mysterious parts of our solar system. Picture a massive, spherical shell of icy objects surrounding the entire solar system, like a snow globe. According to the European Space Agency, the Oort cloud might stretch from 2,000 to 100,000 astronomical units, potentially a quarter of the way to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. That's insanely far. The Oort cloud is thought to be made of trillions of icy chunks. Think frozen comets made of water, ammonia, and methane. These are leftovers from when the solar system formed, kicked out to the edges by the gravity of big planets like Jupiter. Above and below the ecliptic, the Oort cloud wraps around us in every direction, unlike the flat disk of the planets. It's so far away we've never seen it directly, but scientists know it's there because long-period comets, like Hale-Bopp, come zooming in from all angles, suggesting they're from the spherical cloud. Here's a wild thought. The Oort cloud is where our solar system starts to fade into the rest of the galaxy. Above and below, it's the last piece of us before you hit interstellar space. It's like the outer fence of our cosmic backyard. The local interstellar cloud. Our galactic neighborhood. So, what's beyond the Oort cloud? Above and below, we're floating in the local interstellar cloud. 
a slightly denser patch of gas and dust in the Milky Way. According to the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, this cloud is about 30 light-years across, and our solar system is cruising through it right now. It's not thick like a fog, think of it as a super-thin mist, with maybe a few particles per cubic centimeter. Still, it's enough to interact with the heliosphere, shaping that bubble we talked about earlier. The local interstellar cloud is just one piece of the Milky Way, our galaxy, which is a barred spiral about 100,000 light-years wide. Our solar system sits in the Orion Arm, a smaller spiral arm, about 27,000 light-years from the galactic center. If you look up or down from the ecliptic, you're peering through the Milky Way's disk toward its halo, a sparse, spherical region of old stars, globular clusters, and dark matter. Data from the Gaia spacecraft shows the halo stretches far above and below the galaxy's plane, giving us a sense of the 3D structure surrounding us. We're diving deep into the cosmos. Pretty wild, right? If you're loving this, smash that like button and subscribe for more. Share this video with a friend who's curious about the universe, and let's keep exploring together. The local bubble, a cosmic void. Let's go even bigger. Above and below the local interstellar cloud, our solar system is inside something called the local bubble. This is a giant cavity in space, about 300 light years across, where there's barely any gas or dust. Astronomers, using data from X-ray telescopes like Chandra, think this bubble was carved out by supernova explosions millions of years ago. These massive stellar blasts pushed gas and dust outward, leaving a low-density void with denser walls at the edges. Picture our solar system like a tiny boat floating in this huge, empty lake in the galaxy. Above and below, the local bubble stretches out, connecting to other bubbles and clouds in the Milky Way. It's a reminder that even in the emptiness of space, there's structure and history, events that happened long before Earth was even a thing. The big picture, the cosmic web and beyond. Now, let's zoom out to the biggest scale yet. The Milky Way is part of the local group, a cluster of about 50 galaxies, including Andromeda, about 2.5 million light-years away. Above and below, the local group sits in the Virgo supercluster, a massive collection of thousands of galaxies. And beyond that, the universe forms a cosmic web, filaments of galaxies, walls of clusters, and vast voids with almost nothing in them. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey has mapped this web, showing how galaxies clump together like threads in a spider's web, with empty spaces stretching millions of light-years. What's above and below the cosmic web? That's where things get mysterious. The observable universe is about 93 billion light-years across, according to NASA. Beyond that, we don't know what's out there. Maybe the universe goes on forever. Maybe it curves back on itself. Or maybe there's a multiverse with other realities above and below ours. It's a question scientists are still chasing with telescopes like the James Webb. A universe full of questions. So, what's above and below our solar system? It's a wild stack of layers. The heliosphere shielding us, the Oort cloud wrapping us, the local interstellar cloud we're passing through, the local bubble we're floating in, and the cosmic web tying it all together. Each layer tells a story of motion, explosions, and cosmic evolution. But the more we learn, the more questions we have. What's hiding in those voids? Could there be other solar systems out there, maybe even ones with life? And what's beyond the edge of what we can see? That's where I'll leave you today, with a spark of curiosity about our cosmic home. If this journey blew your mind, drop a comment below. What's the wildest thing you learned about the universe today? Like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone who loves a good space mystery. Let's keep exploring the cosmos together, because there's so much more to discover.